Hi, good morning, my dear friends. In the hydraulic calculation chapter one, part one video, we discuss about the occupancy classification. And chapter one, part two video, it was about balanced occupancy classification and the dead zone in the sprinkler production. And also we discuss about the density area curve and its changes. And chapter two, the last video, uh, we saw the how to select the hydraulic area for your project. And in this video, chapter three. Uh, I asked a few questions in the chapter one video. Like, um, if you have some, uh, if you have toilet room in the hydraulic area, you will consider or not. Like that, uh, I asked some practical questions. So I am going to tell you all the answer for this uh, chapter three. So you will get very clear understanding. What are the uh, whatever the problems uh, will come in your project, you will simply overcome and you will you will make exact uh, solution for that. And also in the future videos, chapter four, part one, chapter four, part two, it will be completely about the calculation with our uh, with my. Proper Excel file, and also I will share you the isometric drawing and actual drawing also. So you can also verify each and every points. So end up this video, I believe you will get clear understanding of hydraulic calculation. In the last class, uh, I showed you this example. Uh, it's a light hazard, and for the light hazard, the density based on the density area curve, we have to consider 1,500 square feet. Okay, as so a hydraulic area, and this 1,500 is not fixed. And it can be changed based on few conditions, based on three conditions. Okay, so in this video, I am going to continue with those conditions, and we will see. So here, for the quick response sprinkler, the area should be can be reduced as much as maximum forty percentage. Okay, so here for wet pipe system using quick response sprinkler, the design area can be reduced as much as. 40 percentage. Okay, so the amount of reduction is based on the ceiling height. So we will see the ten of your table how we can reduce or increase that one. So in this table, x direction they have given ceiling height and also y direction percentage reduction to design area they have given. Okay, so for example, you consider uh, for ceiling height uh, less than 10 feet, you can reduce maximum. Forty uh, percentage. I mean, you can, from the overall design area, you can reduce forty uh, percentage. You can reduce. For example, here ten uh, ten uh, is the ceiling height. If you go above uh, to the left side, is forty percentage. You can reduce. For example, one thousand five hundred means one thousand five hundred forty percentage. You can reduce. Similarly, for the ceiling height uh, more than twenty, you should not reduce any anything. You should keep as it is. If it is ceiling height is more than twenty feet. For example, you consider here. And uh, and for other values, you can apply this formula. And uh, for example, you consider uh, I have considered uh, in my project I have 15 feet ceiling height. Okay, so for the 15 feet, I am going to apply this formula to find out how much percent I can reduce the hydraulic area. So here uh, minus 3 into x x is 15 feet divided by 2. So total 22.5 minus uh, 55. So because 55 is the constant value, so if you get do this, then you will get 32.5 percentage. That means for 15 feet ceiling height, you have to reduce 32.5 percentage from your hydraulic area. That means from 1,500 feet square, you have to reduce 32.5 for the quick response sprinkler. So similarly, you can find for the different ceiling height different answer from this table. So the second important thing is in dry system or uh, in double interlock pre-axis system. So you know that in the dry system uh, above the dry wall we don't have air, so we don't have water. It will be air. So if fire happen, the air in the pipe has to be removed first. After that only the water from uh, the wall it will reach the sprinkler. Okay, so that is the case. The increase in area that means they have to increase the thirty percentage of hydraulic area if we have dry system or pre-axis system. So here what they are mentioning this increase in area is required due to the Increased amount of time it will take the water to reach the sprinkler. Okay, for example, if you have the pre-axis wall here means dry wall here means from here it has to reach the sprinkler point here. So this travel time, that is the reason they are increasing the hydraulic area. And finally, we have one more thing: sloped ceiling. In this sloped ceiling concept, uh, for example, you have to uh, see one sloped ceiling like this. Uh, the sprinkler arrangement in this this way. Okay, so this length of the ceiling is six inch, and in the six inch length, if you have the slope more than uh, like one one inch, this is six inch length, and if it is one inch, means you have to increase the uh, design hydraulic area thirty percentage. Okay, so this is the important thing. Like they mention, the slope of the ceiling with a pitch means the slope is exceeding one inch six for six inch. If it is exceeding more than one inch slope, okay, so it is more than one inch slope. And for the uh, six inch length, so that time you have to increase the hydraulic area thirty percentage. So this condition is applying to standard spray sprinkler. So standard spray sprinkler means what other things are comes under this one? Standard spray means it will uh, standard pendant, standard upright sprinkler, and side wall sprinkler. So these are the things uh, comes under standard spray sprinkler. Okay. So you have to do the same for standard spray sprinkler, including extended coverage sprinkler. 
okay and quick response sprinkler also for the cmsa sprinkler you have to do this condition 30 percent increment for over the hydraulic area so coming back to our example in our case the hydraulic area is 1500 for example you assume we have a dry system so dry system as i mentioned we have to increase the hydraulic area so the hydraulic area to how much percentage 30 percentage so let's assume we have the dry system in the same example uh, so we have to i'm going to increase the hydraulic area that means 1500 that is available area into 1.3 so it should be 1950 is the hydraulic area instead of 1500 if you have the dry system so that time what you have to do now in our case we have considered till this point okay so we need to increase the hydraulic area i mean we have to consider some additional sprinklers for example uh, what we are going to, uh, going to do uh, 1950 uh, 950 divided by in our case one sprinkler can protect uh, 196 square feet okay so this area divided by 196 that means you have to consider 9.9 .9 means 10 sprinkler you have to consider okay so the 10 sprinkler already we consider here 4 plus 4 8 sprinkler and the next uh, two sprinkler uh, you have two options whether you can consider the hydraulic area like this like this first option otherwise in the second option you can consider the hydraulic area like this like this mean you can avoid this one first uh, one thing otherwise you can avoid this one so which one is correct okay so we need to see one important condition so this is one of the co common mistake is done by the um, I means uh, fresher of uh, fresher so what happened here the two additional sprinklers are added very closer to the cross main okay not at the end of the branch line this is very important okay so because the reason is the reason the two sprinklers are close to the main included due to the water flow that means the two sprinkler close to the cross main will receive more water that means more water flow than the sprinkler located in the end so more water flow means what happened more friction loss compared with the end sprinkler so that is the reason we are installing this one we are considering very near to the yeah, near, very near to the cross main so the answer will be if you have dry system it will be like this one as i shown here i have considered like this i have included the two sprinkler near to the cross main okay i didn't consider this two because here the water flow will be higher the friction loss will be higher that's all if i can uh, supply the water if, if, uh, if i can overcome the friction loss which is here then i can surely overcome the friction loss here also that is the reason we are considering the high friction loss area so here i have one practical site issues this is the interesting question for you so i have a light hazard 1500 square feet so uh, it's a light hazard so as per nfe we need to consider 1.2 times of this light hazard area that is 1000 uh, hydraulic area 1500 so as you know as we did in the last uh, calculation uh, we have to take the square root of this one into uh, sorry 1500 we have to take the square root and we have to multiply with 1.2 times so that is 46.47 so this will be the length length of the uh, length of the hydraulic area suppose in consider i have in my case the hydraulic area is 40 feet into 70 feet okay so i need 46.46 feet but i have only 40 feet but uh, i have higher width so is that acceptable to increase the width or not so like you see here i have 40 feet uh, this area this side and i have 70 feet in my project hydraulic area okay so here i need 46.46 feet but i have only 40 feet so what i can do here is the same step like 1500 i need totally the available is 40 so balance is 37.5 that means this 37.5 feet you can add in the width okay so there is no issue for that so for you would take 40 feet length and 37.5 you can consider in the width but mainly the important thing is you have to consider in the same cross main okay so you should for example if this is your cross main so all this is your branch area branch line that means you have to consider from the same cross main this this thing this one and this one like that okay so you should not move, move to the different cross main different cross main of hydraulic area and uh, I have one more question for you. Suppose your uh, pump is located in the central yard. From here, it is supplied to different buildings, different office building, different accommodation building, everything. And finally, in the remotest location, I have a small building where, it, where I need a spindler. So here, this small building size is 40 feet into 35 feet. Okay. So 40 feet into 35 feet means how much will come? 40 into 35, it will be 1,400 square feet. But you know that as per uh, NFA 13, we need 1,500 square feet. So what I will do? So the answer is, if your hydraulic area of the building is less than the design area, you just calculate whatever you have. That's all.
and finally one more very interesting concept is suppose in your hydraulic area you have a toilet room like this okay so the toilet room is located uh, exactly in the hydraulic area so you are doing the in your calculation the question is you need to consider this toilet or not so as per nfa sprinklers protecting small compartments less than 5.1 square meter for example in our case you consider the toilet which is located in the hydraulic area uh, the area is 5.1 square meter the toilet area so that term it can be shall be permitted to be omitted from the hydraulic calculation so that means you can omit that hydraulic area so for example this is the hydraulic area this is the uh, toilet mean you can omit this area if it is less than 5.1 square meter and you can consider the balance area and you have to comply the 1500 square feet that's your minimum requirement okay so you have to comply that one so i hope that oh, this hydraulic area concept is very clear for you so we can start uh, from the next video this uh, hydraulic calculation and uh, we have a very detailed uh, excel file also so here in this excel file you can you can see completely the the requirements so here i have given step by step uh, what is the flow how to calculate the flow with plenty of uh, like uh, lots of details are there i end up this uh, excel you can uh, decide how to size the uh, fire pump with proper flow and height okay so uh, thank you for watching the video we will again uh, see in the next interesting video so till then bye bye see you